we're doing a special return trip to Conquest Land. More Zero! Yay! My buddy Tabmock99 sent me over this director's cut of episode 13, Twisted Truths. And I'd like to give him a bit of a shout out here. If you enjoy deep dives into the Mortal Kombat lore and other subjects, you should really check out his channel, Tabmock99. Also, if you've been following me since the Mortal Comedy days, he was the voice of Damashi in that series. Oh, do. Oh yeah, Kami Dogu, you're weird. Anyway. I need them to destroy the realms. Uh-huh. I mean, save the realms. <laughs> now, if you don't remember the episode Twisted Truths, it was the one with the Johnny Cage stand-in Tomas and Reptile, so I'm going to go over some of the differences here. What is this French sacro abu? <laughs> This director's cut of the episode is really interesting. It's a highly unfinished edit of the episode, mostly featuring just the onset audio. So it's largely unscored, and some sounds like the footsteps are really loud compared to the final edit. There are also some weird temp noises in some places, like over the opening MK logo. With this unfinished version, we can also hear that some spots with dubbed in filler dialogue, nothing was actually being said on set at all. Thank you very much. Have a nice see you later. There are a lot of minor shot changes through the edit as well. A lot of close ups have been added into the final cut, and of course, some shots are extended in the rough director's cut. And some things have actually been extended in the final. Kung Lao? Sure. Lives in the old Rayland trading post. Near here? Just over in the square. Since you're near here, I'd be happy to show you around. Anyway, just live around the corner. A kind of amusing edit I noticed in the final nitpicking over these differences is the fact that the waitress hitting on Tomas walks back over to Magda as the scene ends, which is a shot reused as she had done that earlier to have a conversation about him with Magda. Well, in the rough cut, it just ends on Tomas eating. Sometimes these changes just really don't make a lot of sense and are quite pointless. Like, why was reusing this shot a better choice than just showing Tomas eating? Gorgeous and polite. <laughs> Can't be from around here then. Wait, I thought Ciro was the politest Mortal Kombat character. Ciro, always so polite. But I guess Magda reconsidered how polite she thought Ciro was after he got all rapey. I sure don't want you to forget it. You know, you are always pretty polite. You're an animal, a pathetic animal. And I hope I never lay eyes on you again. Of course, that didn't stop her from getting into a relationship with him after that. <laughs> Stupid conquest. Next, we have Reptile's greatest victory, killing a waitress. But it's much more amusing in the rough cut as they haven't done any of the Beverly invisible reptile effects, so she gets killed by nothing. Also, Reptile is... Apparently a bird in the rough cut. Who's there? <laughs> this also features the best version of the Conquest intro ever, as they don't have the theme over it, so it just runs in silence. You wanted to see me. What's wrong? Ella's dead. Under my dead friend Ella, Ella, Ella. Uh, uh. But last night, a stranger came in. They talked for a while. That's it. Some more odd changes with the transition shot in the rough cut being a sunset, and in the final, all of them switching it to candles, which makes less sense considering it's clearly not that dark out yet. They also dropped an overhead shot to start this scene, which is another bad call, really, as it was a kind of nice shot, and really, it's far more awkward to not establish everyone who's actually there and just start the scene with a bunch of close-ups. Check the body. No cuts. She was strangled. Maybe a rope. The guy knew what he was doing. I checked the body. No cuts. She was strangled. Maybe a rope. The guy knew what he was doing. Tomas! 
This is our friend Ciro. After Ciro blows up at Tomas for daring to exist and then apologizing due to it just being his dead Ella rage, Tomas actually replies in the rough cut instead of just awkwardly standing there silent in the final. Sorry, I just got some bad news this morning, I guess. Uh, I'm a little edgy. I understand. Sorry, I just got some bad news this morning, I guess. Uh, I'm a little edgy. Nothing's been decided yet. But perhaps most important of all, we get to hear someone on set clear their throat. <clears throat> also, the pointless Vorpak spy shot and transition to the next scene seems to have been temp tracked with some music from the Mortal Kombat movies. You've brought him here? As ordered. You've brought him here? As I ordered. So you'll notice that Khan's line was altered from the rough cut, which makes sense because him saying as ordered makes it sound like Khan was ordered by someone above him. Maybe it was me. Oh. Though the intent was probably that he's saying he ordered reptile here, but as I ordered makes that more clear. There's also something rather funny about hearing the mighty Shao Kahn's chair creaking as he leans forward. There's quite a few edits from this cut changed to speed up the pace, which makes sense, like Blandy Cage's line here being over Taja in the final rather than just being its own shot. It'll be an honor. I hope you push me hard in our fight. It'll be an honor. I hope you push me hard in our fight. Zero butts in because he's the greatest Mortal Kombat bot, and we get a much more recognizable temp track from the Mortal Kombat movie as they're about to fight. Why don't we get at it and see what happens? Definitely makes this silly fight seem more intense than the more relaxed elevator fight music of the final. <laughs> Though the blow sound effects sound very phony on the rough cut. <laughs> And you really gotta love that sportsmanship of Ciro. Really makes you feel so bad for him when he gets his arm dislocated. Now this is an odd one. In between act breaks on Conquest, I guess originally they'd have these bumpers with action from the episode with the MK logo in the corner. These are included on the newer DVD set, but weren't on the older ones, which is why I never mentioned them. They're rather jarring, especially where this one is showing you a fight that hasn't happened yet. In the rough cut, though, it just replays some of the Ciro Tomas fight we just saw, and then an Act 2 title card pops up. Now if you pay attention to the line deliveries here, they're all different because they've dubbed over the lines for certain scenes for the final mix. I really am sorry. These things can happen. We all know that. I really am sorry. These things can happen. We all know that. People get hurt in training as much as in combat. People get hurt in training as much as in combat. Should I get the doctor? I suppose. No, there's no need. Should I get the doctor? I suppose. No, there's no need. Probably just the ones that had more background noise in them have been looped as a lot of the scenes remain the same. I mean... I can put it back if Ciro will permit me. I mean, I can put it back if Ciro will permit me. Ciro questions Tomas's ability to reset his arm a bit more in the rough cut. How do I know you know what you're doing? I was taught. I want to make damn sure I use this arm again. Got that. Kung Lao suggests that Tomas and Taja forget cranky baby Ciro and go have a date night, which Taja immediately accepts in the final where she questions this in the rough cut. Why don't you guys take off for a while? Come on. I'll show you around. Why don't you guys take off for a while? I'll handle the rest. You sure? I'd like to help. Come on, I'll show you around. Clearly this line was taken out because it was unbelievable that anyone would care about Sierra's well-being. Or time, whatever. Ciro and Kung Lao's conversation about Tomas is cut short for the final, which again was probably for time, but it's also a good thing because they really start laying on thick. He's that good. He's incredible. Amazing moves. And a nice guy, too. Almost too good to be true. See, I didn't realize that originally it wasn't just Taja that fell for Tomas, but Kung Lao and Ciro as well. 
Tomas is truly a Mortal Kombat miracle. The scene of Tasha and Tomas at the forest farmer's market begins with translucent reptile climbing up a pillar, which of course isn't present in the rough cut. And I don't even know if inserting reptile was originally the plan, as this shot is centered differently and doesn't focus on the pillar at all. Their conversation has had the beginning chopped off of it as well, which kind of changes the context a bit. Which originally was a bit more tragic, as they're discussing Taja's parents not being there for her, and then the final it kind of seems a bit more comedic with Tomas just stating, You don't look like a thief. Funny, you don't look like a thief. So, how did you live after your parents disappeared? Well, you know, I, thank you, I made do. A uh, little of this, a little of that, uh, trading things. Well, these things that you uh, picked up and traded, were they yours? Not always. <laughs> funny you don't look like a thief. It's awkward though with that thank you Taja says in the middle of that. I'm guessing a merchant handed her something or Tomas moved a branch out of the way or something like that, but it's weird when that's off screen. And again another shot change switching to a further one in the final so they can insert reptile again. Tomas gets extended flirting time with Taja where she pretty much shuts him down a bit, giving this whole thing a bit of a creepier vibe than in the final. Well, you've been on the road a hell of a long time. Yes, and I've met a lot of beautiful women. Mm -hmm. Like you. The difference is you don't know it. <laughs> Should I stop flirting? No, uh, but uh, let me be the one to tell you if it's working. Okay? Deal. Look at that stuff over there. In the aired version, Tasha seems to say, let's look at that stuff over there, just because she's being a bit awkward about being hit on, without really a hint, though, that it's not working. I like you. Is that simple? That simple. Let's go look at that stuff over there. God, it's amazing the junk people buy. So what do you sell at the trading post? Junk. <laughs> uh, really blew that take, literally. We'll take it. Well, you like it, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, but... Why? I don't know, it, it's uncomplicated, yet beautiful. Like you. Is calling her uncomplicated really a good flirt? No wonder they cut that one. Then you must have one too. Jeez, Taja. Mycality! Next up is a line that was way better in the rough cut. I've prepared some tea. Should cut the pain. Boiled the hell out of this root. Should cut the pain. Taja boiled the hell out of that root. There's just something way more amusing about that. Boiled the hell out of this root. Should cut the pain. He didn't mean to hurt you. I know. I guess I'm just slower to be bowled over by his charm. Are you sure, Ciro? Almost too good to be true. Nice night. Very. Oh, seems like we're at a small talk. Jeez, I forgot what a real connection these two had. Poor Taja. Oh wow, they were really pushing this connection between Vorpax and Taja way more in the original edits of these. Kinda wish they had kept that, as it adds a bit more dimension to Vorpax. It also actually tells you why Vorpax is looking mopey there, which in the final you never get any context for. The next scene of Shao Kahn and Reptile discussing the development of the Taja Tomas romance in the final cut does not appear at all in the director's rough cut version. Tomas has become close with the one called Taja. It really makes sense too that this scene was a last minute inclusion looking at how awkward it is as all the shots of Reptile are clearly from the earlier scene where Vorpax was giving Khan an update. And they didn't shoot the pickups with Jeff Meek to look like he and Reptile are actually looking at each other correctly as they're both facing the left side of the screen which does not look correct at all. Also clearly the Reptile actor isn't even trying to look like he's talking here. I I understand my mission. I'm guessing this was included to give Reptile some actual dialogue, but it is really clunky and ultimately adds nothing. But I suppose its inclusion meant we had less time for the Taja Tomas makeout session part two. But I don't know, if you really liked her with Blandy Cage, maybe you're upset about that. However, here's my real OTP, Ciro and Magda. The main change to this scene is the door being hung on a lot longer, so 
they can impose that not-so-great invisible reptile effect on the door, which makes it look like it'd be impossible for Magda not to crash into him. And I kinda wonder why Reptile apparently dragged Magda out of her place into the middle of the woods. I guess he just really wanted this shot with a bunch of fog on her corpse. If the goal was just to make sure people found her body quick, he could've just taken her out her front door. Anyway, time for Act 3! Man, these act cards on the rough cut make this show seem like it's from the 60s or earlier. Over at the dead Magda crime scene, it sounds like some piece of equipment is about to fall over or die. The beggar woman who gives them Tomas's bracelet, which was planted by Magda's body, and some info about some other recent attacks is actually paid off in the rough cut. Got a couple of coins? Sure. And even though them paying her is cut, you can still hear the coins and know she's holding them in the aired version. We have a problem at the trading post. Plaster cracking? Well go dry? Do you always have to be so sarcastic? Yes. We have a visitor. Named Tomas? I think Taj is falling for him. Oh boy. Now, I can't believe they cut this. In the final, Raiden looks concerned as Kung Lao heads out, but originally, he totally went back to relaxing like an ass. <sighs> The next scene of Tomas walking through the woods is totally silent until a temp line of a woman calling for help pops up. Help me! Somebody help me! Help me! Somebody help me! The battle with Tomas e. Cage and Brian Clark, aka Wrath from WCW at the time, has been temp tracked with a version of the main Mortal Kombat theme from the movie. No! <laughs> So, when I originally covered this episode, I called this belly-to-back suplex a back body drop like an idiot. BACK BODY DROP! Can you imagine announcers calling moves wrong in wrestling? Anyway, MORTAL WRESTLING is exactly what these weird interludes keep making it feel like. <laughs> The big guy who comes to take Tomas away after Vorpax accuses him of attacking her has been redubbed, and listening to his takes, I kinda get why. From the man attacking you! Where, what man? From the man attacking you! <laughs> Where, what man? You're coming with us. You're coming with us. Also, it never made sense to me why in the final, instead of taking him to the authorities, that they take him to the trading post. But there is some dialogue that at least makes this make a little bit more sense in the rough cut. I'll go. I'm staying at the trading post. You can take me there. Now, I still don't get why Tomas would be allowed to dictate where they take him, but that at least makes it seem less like the trading post is also where they drop off criminals. But I'd be really remiss if I did not show you the temp effect for Vorpax portaling back to Outworld. Absolutely stunning. There's a really long Vorpax walking up to Khan and taking her hood off shot here, which I really don't know why was ever in a cut. It's just so slow. You can also notice that they've slightly pitched down Jeff Meek's voice for Khan in the final. Clever. Using my palace guard as your attacker. Clever. Using my palace guard as your attacker. Two of Earth's greatest fighters turning against each other. Two of Earth's greatest fighters turning against each other. He attacked a woman? I did not. I fought a man attacking her. That's not what she said. No, it's that's what she said. Totally ruined that joke. And then suddenly we get the proper Mortal Kombat movie theme for the Kung Lao Tomas fight. <laughs> At the end of this fight, after Kung Lao finishes Tomas with his flip kick, Taja dashes out and Ciro holds her back, which is cut from the final, just leaving Ciro randomly holding Taja at the end of the battle. My god. A wall. I had no idea. Of course, this is more missing reptile effects shots, and once again, reptile's a bird. <laughs> 
And this is where Reptile Acid spits at Kung Lao and Tomas takes it in the face, showing how little sense and what a waste of time the setting Tomas up as the killer of waitresses plan made. However, the scene is much more amusing with the effects removed. <laughs> In the original cut, Reptile is meant to try and take one more acid shot before bravely running away, where in the final it's just, I'm only trying that once, bye! Tasha knew he was good. Zero lost someone too. Magda. It's funny when they cut lines like this, so it's like characters have completely forgotten about another character's death. They only have the storage capacity in their minds for one. But again, that was about Ciro, and it was unbelievable that they'd care about him and his horrible relationship with that girl he assaulted once. This is the Emperor's doing. Yes. He's tried to kill Tomas before. Like he has you. And failed. Whoa, no wonder they cut this one. This line makes it clear that Raiden knew Tomas was a good guy and could have cleared this up with Kung Lao so that they didn't go after each other. Epilogue time with an inappropriately timed train whistle. I was really falling in love. And did he love you? Yes. Then that's all that matters. You can hurt them, Shao Kahn. But you cannot destroy them. That's where the episode ends, but on the end of this tape there are some dailies of the Tomas and Taja bad date scene, the trading post scenes with Taja and Tomas making out, and the scene where Taja boiled the hell out of some root and they talk about food. Are you sure it's the last time I said going? I'll take four pickup. How's Magda? Better. Worried about you. I don't want her leaving war. Say it again. Where's Kung Lao anyway? Tavern. Picking us up the food we're all going to suppose. La 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 la. la. <laughs> Zero, the most la 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 Mortal Kombat character. There, I did a new one for you. And uh, really, that Daniel Bernhardt flub is the best part of these dailies on the end, for sure. Anyway, I found it neat to look at the differences between this rough director's cut and the final, and what modifications were in its favor and which ones weren't so much. And really, the whole thing was worth it to spend more time with Ciro, right? <laughs> Ready? Huh? Okay. Picking us up the food we're all going to suppose. La, 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 la.